My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. A couple months ago, we fielded a homework question about one of the year's largest IPOs, a company called App Lovin', which is a mobile game company that also makes software tools for other mobile app developers. This, by the way, is a great business. I told you that they had something going here, but I also warn you to wait for the stock to come down because this kind of sliver IPO often ends up being incredibly volatile as traders brace themselves for more shares to hit the market. In other words, they only let a little bit go at the beginning. Sure enough, since then, App Lovin's pulled back from 81 to 55, and the business has gotten better. When you look at the quarter they just reported, this company's doing incredibly well. They had 123% revenue growth, for heaven's sake. Uh, while the stock initially rallied 8.5% the next day, it quickly reversed and gave up all of its gains. Some of that's because App Love had declined to raise its full-year forecast, and they have an odd forecasting method. Some of it is because investors are worried about Apple's new privacy rules that make it harder to do targeted advertising, something that really doesn't even apply to most of App Lovin's businesses. My one concern is that the lockup on insider selling is about to end. All the shares will become available for trading in a couple of tranches over the course of the next uh, not that in near future. And that's never good news. If the stock gets hit, though, it could be worth buying in weakness, given its incredibly strong growth and terrific margins. But do not take it from me. Let's check in with Adam Ferrugi. He is the co-founder, chairman, CEO of AppLovin to learn more about the quarter and what he sees going on forward. Mr. Ferrugi, welcome to Mad Money. Hey, thanks for having me, Jim. Excited to be here. Well, I got to tell you, sir, many people come on this show and they say they have a flywheel. And they don't mean it. They don't mean it. It's like just a group of, uh, 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 of disp disparate businesses. But you've truly cobbled together a company that actually every business works better with the other. And I want you to tell people about it. Yeah, for sure. So it really has to do with we built a marketing platform for app marketing and monetization tools over the last decade. And then three years ago, we saw an opportunity to get into games, build a games business that could get large scale reach and get us first party data that could then fuel our software to become better for advertisers we work with. And that's exactly what we've executed on. Actually, you mentioned our overall growth was 123%. What we're most excited about in our business is that the software platform grew over 250%. We did $200 million in software revenue last year. We're trending to clear 600 million this year. So it's all the pieces coming together and as you said, making them better. Now, it's important for people to know you're not some company that's sitting there losing boatloads of money while you grow. No, not at all. So th this is the great part about our business is that every incremental dollar of software revenue that we report has incredibly high margin. We really don't have costs associated with it. So actually in the last quarter, if you dissect our numbers, we beat revenue estimates that were out there by about 30 million, and we cleared EBITDA estimates by about 30 million. The software revenue converts almost one for one to bottom line, and that's hugely impactful as we see tons of growth ahead of us for that software business. Now, there are these people who keep thinking that Apple's new privacy rules impact you badly, but you have an incredible amount of what's known as first party data. People stay at your site. I don't understand why people extrapolate that Apple Oven's got to be the company that's being hurt. You know, I'd, I'd love to say we were skilled on this, but I think we got a little lucky, but we did have the foresight to know first party data creates an advantage in marketing software. And that's why we got into games. We now have over 200 million players playing our games every month. We've gotten first party data on hundreds of millions of consumers over time. That feeds into the software paired with our machine learning that we really launched and executed on a year ago. The business is accelerating on all fronts. Well, I, I want to talk about that machine learning because you made an acquisition, um, Axon, and it was the kind of thing, again, I see companies make acquisitions. I can't figure out what the hell they're doing. This one seems to have really accelerated your, your growth. So Axon actually was homegrown, built up by our engineering team, and really the, it came together last September, and the platform wasn't using our first-party data before. So what we did was we started building this, these models they could become smarter at figuring out what app to match consumers up with. And that's accelerated the growth in the business every quarter since, really outsized rates. Quarter over quarter, actually, Q2 over Q1, we grew the software business sequentially over 60%. That's unheard of in software. First half of the year, we drove almost 2 billion app installs. The consumers downloaded discovering great new content off of our platform. And we're very excited about what lies ahead. 
Okay, now, I do want people to—I to, don't want to infuse it in temper, because the stock has come down, even though you haven't a great quarter. But there, are, there is stock uh, that will be for sale. We know that. It's no sin. I mean, your company's been around since 2012. It's okay to have a liquidity event for people. But I do want them to know, I mean, you didn't just start two years ago and dump it stock. I do want people to know that there's a possibility that some stock will come in for sale, and that could make it so that people have, a, let's say, a better chance if it does come in. If they don't sell, then obviously this is the bottom. Look, look, 20 percent of the shares came lock up free on Friday and you're still seeing low volume and right. very little drop from there. And the reality is the company's closely held. I'm the biggest individual shareholder and I bought last quarter at sixty dollars and around sixty dollars. And the other reality is our software business went from 200 last year to 600 plus this year. So we're confident we're going to hit a billion dollars plus in software revenue next year. And the market's not even absorbing this high growth of a software business. There aren't many in the world at that scale, at that high a growth rate. So as people start appreciating how strong our business is, you're going to see this as a great value buying opportunity. Well, well the last thing, I, I, we cover all the gaming companies. Uh, I kind of feel like that they're, um, you, you know, when it used to be on a disc, you down, then you download it, and now you, you really, App Lovin's kind of leapfrogged everybody. Is that a, an accurate depiction of what other guys are doing in mobile gaming versus you? I mean, we hope so, right? Like the advantage we have is we're not just building games and trying to make a business model from the games. We have this marketing platform that lets us monetize the data from our audience in our games. And we're giving consumers a huge benefit. We're helping them with their data, discover new content that they can go download and engage with. So we're driving up all parts of our ecosystem. And that economic advantage is massive in a very fragmented and highly competitive market. And it's why we were able to grow the gaming side of the business zero to over $2 billion in just three years. Well, that's just incredibly impressive. I was so glad that a caller pointed it out to me. There's so many new companies. This one is very exciting. That's Adam Ferrugi, the co-founder, chairman, CEO of App Love. And thank you, sir. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. There's all these fabulous companies that are just doing so well. They're growing so fast. They're making money. It is hard to keep track of them. But our viewers do. And this was one where, frankly, I am uh, in awe of the growth that this company is generating. We have money's back in for the break.